as nerds, there are debates that all of us like to partake in. If a certain fictional character could be another fictional character in a fight. If this franchise or medium that I enjoy is better than a franchise and medium that you enjoy. But one debate that often gets overlooked by the wider nerd and fantasy fan community is was that fight scene even that good? Now, my friends and I are going to come together in a series to debate and discuss this very subject. Whether or not certain fights are good or bad. And we're going to leave it up to you to decide in the comments if they are or not. Welcome, my friends, to this new series on my channel that is called Nerd fights. What's up guys? My name is Glassfoot. Um, as you probably know from the rest of this channel, I am a massive nerd. Um, if you couldn't tell by the bookshelves that have been my background for the past two to three months. I thought you were about to knock all those over. I was really scared I was going to as well. Um, and as all nerds do, I love discussing things that I find interesting. This is my friend Jacob. So. Both of us are sword fighters, have been sword fighting for, together especially, for what, what was it, 2016 when I joined FMA? About? Uh, I'm, I'm 2016, 2017-ish. Right um, our buddy Zach used to run a sword fighting uh, class out of his martial arts studio before he moved away. We were both a part of that. We had a hell of a lot of fun doing that, but... And I, <laughs> I busted my face. <laughs> His face did get busted open. Uh, if you saw my The End of an Era vlog, uh, he, um, he was the one with the massive black eye because we managed to put a staff through the helmet into his eye. I was just, just put that staff yeah. here. Wait, it was a staff. Open. It was a staff. It wasn't even a spear. Oh, that's right. No, that was Keith who got me with a spear. That was a long time. Yeah, ago. but it was a staff. Okay. I, I've actually been stabbed. I got stabbed through the eye hole um, a few times as well. Like. Just Zach came in, overhead shot when I, and I looked up. I always wore my glasses underneath, though. Or I started to after a while, so it like, would hit my glasses and only affect them. It was awesome. <laughs> wow, we've gotten way off topic. But, as you know, all nerds like to discuss things that we enjoy. We also tell each other that we're wrong. Like, Alec but, is wrong. Uh, <laughs> Jacob's wrong. But one of the things that we like to discuss because we are swordsmen, kind of, are fight scenes in especially fantasy and medieval type shows. One scene that both of us kind of agree and disagree on is the fight scene between the Hound and Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones. I like it because I dislike the editing and the choreo. He dislikes it because he doesn't think Brienne could have logically won that fight. I don't think she should have. I think she could have won, I think she could have won but not the way she did. So, today, we're going to be discussing and arguing, and then we'll probably end up leaving it up to the comments or people outside of this, because there's no way we are going to come to a agreed conclusion in this, because nerds... So wait, do we agree that we will go, we will decide who is right based on the comments? Maybe. If we get enough comments. Let's I'm going to sanitize my hands now. Oh, I see. Do you want some? Yes. <laughs> Appreciate it, boss. And I hope to turn this into a running series with other friends of mine um, when it comes to fight scenes and other stuff like that in uh, different nerdists, n nerd media, because nerds. Uh, but without further ado, welcome to the first episode of Nerd Fights. So I'm going to let him start off with his points on why he dislikes the scene and why Brian logically shouldn't have won that. Well, because logically Brienne shouldn't have been in that point, well, logically Brienne shouldn't, sh there's very little chance that Brienne would have actually come in contact with the Hound, based on how she how she should have been going, based on where the, on the books, but that's the whole different thing. We're basing it on the show, not the books, but uh, I haven't read the books, he has, so he might, dis he might bring up points from the books that I won't know, so if well, okay. it seems like he's winning more, that's why. Oh, okay, sure thing, Glass. I'm, I'm just saying. No, you're, you're Jacob. good. Jacob. Okay, you're, you're good, man. So, also, I just don't buy that, that, that Brienne could beat the Hound in a one on one duel. In the book, at that point, and in the show, he has been weakened by various injuries, 
and I feel like that is something of an okay-ish justification. It's not world-breaking in my opinion. I, I just don't... It's hard for me to buy that Brienne of Tarth could beat the Hound. Now, for me, I disagree. Part of this is because I've actually lost fights to people smaller than me in the past. But, so, it, it's not a logical, it's not a super logical um, leap for me to make that a woman can beat a man based on situations of him, of the tiredness and being it. Um, that on top of the fact that she had basically just woken up despite that she was sleeping on rocks without any sort of padding or anything else. In armor. In armor. I, I refuse to believe anyone can actually sleep in armor. Like, just... It could be done, it wouldn't be it comfortable. Just, no way that's comfortable. No way you're getting a good night's sleep. For me, it's the fact she has clearly has more energy. On top of the way the fight goes, where she just starts hitting him with rocks at one point, especially after the nut shot, I think that probably hurt him a bit. He gets her right back right afterwards. True! True. That is true. But she, once she started hitting him with a head in the, in the head with a rock, that, for me, kind of sealed that she was going to win the fight. The fact that she came in fresh where he was tired, that to me makes more sense that she would win within the world. Though both of us can agree, the fight ends like shit. Actually, the fight is more, is, it's, it's a good way of tying in, tie, of skipping over some of the book, some of the book fluff. I think it was a, mo the most okay. sweet thing, thing they did. As far as that fight, I think it was one of the most effective things as they did moving the story forward. You mean dropping the hound off the cliff? Well, yes, because he gets he gets grievously injured in a battle against some of the mountain's men in the book, uh. and this was and they'd already killed those men in the bar fight, you know, the one where, ah. where the hound wants the more chicken. Oh, okay. I relate to that, but uh, <laughs> I don't. I will never kill over food, pussy. And so, pretty much, we're not if I can up, avoid it, I'm not killing each other over food. Over Sorry. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. And so pretty much, yeah, I, th I thought they did a, I think, as far as ending the fight and prefacing the fight, I think they did a good job with it. I think the actual fight, the choreography is, the choreography where you can actually see it is, is decent. You can tell they put some thought into it, and, they, and I generally have a decent idea of where the characters are. However, the fact of the matter is you can barely, there's, what, three, four wide shots where you actually three see... Three or four where you can actually see what's going on. One, they are on this side of the screen, and this entire bit is completely open. That did a good job as far as telling us that they're moving a certain direction. Though. True, but it also looks very awkward on its own. Yes. I think they could have chose a better setting for the fight, if they, if they are going to make something new that wasn't in the book. Yeah. I feel like they could... The, the setting wasn't that good. Yeah. Alright, that leads me, me to my, my next point. This fight is unnecessary. It didn't need to happen. There's better ways they could have gotten Arya and, and Brienne together. And gotten the Hound incapacitated before his beginning of his uh, not beginning, the, for more of the, the turning point of his, of his character arc. I think that that could have been done a number of different ways but that's not this video. I think that a fight with Brienne was lazy of them to write in, but I think and it shows in the fight, the way it's cut. You know, they had a minimal amount of footage, and that's what they used. But, there was, this was still when the show had some passion behind it, so it's, e even that is not bad. As opposed to something in the later season. <laughs> Alright, Alec, your turn. Uh, and, for me, uh, what makes me truly dislike the fight, um, the ending is a bit anticlimactic for me, with kind of the hound just falling off the cliff. Personally, if even if it had been Brienne falling off the cliff instead of the Hound, I still would have found that very anticlimactic. A character just suddenly falling and that's how the fight ends, I think is a very boring way to end it. My pro personal issue with the fight overall comes down to the fact that the actors playing Brienne and the Hound, they're not stuntmen, they're not swordsmen. Or at least Gwendolyn Christie isn't, I don't know about... I know, Clegane's character. I know Rory McCann did e did efforts to be as convincing as he could be. Rory McCann's awesome. Yeah, but, like, but even even then, you, there are times when you just have to get the professionals in there, in the costumes, to make the fight look as good as possible. Yes. And I'm in the opinion, that my biggest problem is the starting of that fight. There are about 20 quick edit cuts in about 20 seconds, and it's impossible to follow what's happening until they suddenly end up in a wider cliff face. 
I think, yeah, I think what they're kind of going for is trying to show it was a longer fight than it was, and the maybe. But my my <sighs> thing though is it just looks choppy, especially there's a point where he swings and she blocks, and the next shot is him swinging the same move. They showed the same move twice. Yes. And. I, I, I just think that's bad editing. I'm totally fine, and actually some of my favorite fight scenes show the intensity and insanity that is battle. A good, a good one that does this in Game of Thrones, actually, is the Battle of the Bastards. Yeah, and... Um, and then uh, the Mountain versus the Viper. Those are both fine Battle examples. of the Bastards is a good example. And then um, from episode one of The Witcher, the war scene. Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, that scene, it does a really good job. It's extremely quick edits and just insanity, but that's what it feels like to be in a battlefield. But in a one-on-one -on -one conflict, that's not how a fight feels. And I can tell you this for an example of multiple one-on-one -on -one fights that I've been in. He'll attest too, that one-on-one -on -one fights don't have that insane rush of just everything happening at once. They have a bit of that because that's how fights work, but overall, not really how it feels. Yeah, especially the way they were going at it, there wasn't any other third parties that would have shown up. I mean, as cool as it would be for Padre just to go and just murder, try and murder one of them. The closest it would have been would be Arya trying to <laughs> Brienne with her needle. There's 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 actually a scene earlier in the earlier in this ep that episode where the Hound gives her shit about the whole need about the whole sword thing. Stabby, 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 stabby. It's like, stabby, stabby, stabby. Right here, hard as you can. And she stabs and sticks in the, it sticks in the armor. He it's looks, armor? <laughs> oh shit, it's not yeah. doing anything. Dexter. But, uh, not that wouldn't happen to, you know, season six or later Arya, because she's, she's overpowered. Yeah. But, <laughs> but she's not powered. really overpowered. She's just much more competent than she is at that point in the show. She killed the Night King. That was supposed to, that, that should have been John. It, they, they, I actually liked her killing the Night King, personally. This is gonna. This is a different nerd fight. Night King is a completely different nerd fight. This is Brienne and the versus the Hound. Okay. We can actually do Night King right after this if you want. I might have to dip out and, and go hit my team building my team building exercise and. That's go, fine. Go. I'm yeah. saying we can do night. We oh. can do Night King in another episode. Oh, bet totally, totally. Okay, so the other thing about the fight is that so Glass said I, that you know we'd probably I'd probably be angry no matter who got thrown off the cliff. No, no. In, Brienne, in, in the books, you have to read about Brienne, just and Brienne and Potty <laughs> walking across these fucking plains, <laughs> just doing nothing except for walking and talking. Not even interesting talk, it's just dialogue of, so for the sake of word count. And this is like a solid 15, 20 chapters of this. <laughs> so they just fucking killed Brienne off. I probably would have liked the show more, but that's a whole different point. Gwyneth and Christie did a fine job playing Brienne, and I, I I totally believe that she was Brienne of Tarth. You know, I believe all the characters in the show are the characters from the books. Like the little I know about their book portrayals, the Stannis got done dirty. Renly was perfect. Robert was really well done. This is another video yeah. where he just explains all the differences between the book and the show to me because <laughs> I don't know them. <laughs> Yep, okay, yes sir, we will, uh, yeah, oh yeah, just, just hit me up. <laughs> um, so, but, so another thing, as, as far as why, as why I think the Hound outclassed Brienne, should outclass Brienne, even mm -hmm. at his wounded state, this was the guy that was chosen by the richest family in, West, in Westeros to watch their psychopathic little princeling, all right? Okay, the, re fair. the reason he gets the name, the part of, yeah. He's Joffrey's bodyguard. He's Joffrey's hound. Yes. Joffrey, the person who for fun crossbows hookers. You know, there's, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a whole thing. What the f... Just, just watch the show. My absolute hatred of Joffrey, by the way, literally comes from season one. <laughs> Dude, you're missing out. Like, seriously, watching him die is one of the best feelings oh, I've, I've ever- Oh, I've seen him die, and it made me so happy! You watched the death scene without watching everything in between? In my defense, it came up in a compilation of Epic Death video. Okay, that's fair. In but... my defense, I didn't exactly seek out his death scene. Well, I did, but... Uh... <laughs> so, anyway, this was that- this was- the you know the heir, the royal heir to the royal throne the iron throne his personal bodyguard for the better part of for the better part of Joffrey's conscious life getting beaten by 
a large woman who's got who's received sword sword training and who was at one point a a Kingsguard to Renly Baratheon, all right, and who is currently on the run for his supposed murder by at the hands of Stannis. I'm not saying spoilers because it's the show's over. If you want to see it, you would have. If you're seen watching it. this, you've probably seen the show. <laughs> I don't buy that Ren that one of Renly's Kingsguards. I'm sorry, one of his Rainbow Guards. That's what he called them. Rainbow Guard. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what class was this? Is something funny about that? No, it's amazing. <laughs> I love the name. Yeah. And while and while yeah, I will give her credit that she earned that place by in in a tournament of one on one duels against other knights. We see the Hound cut down so many of people like that, and you know we see the battle of uh, the battle of the Blackwater. The hound is just going through, fucking cutting people in half. There's a scene where he takes the where he takes his bra where he takes his sword, fucking lops a guy straight in fucking two. All right, and like, do I really want? Do I really believe that someone from from uh, from Tarth, not Karth, Karth's a different place. Karth is a real life city. No, it's actually one Game of Thrones. Wait, really? Yes. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of Karth. Karth, the greatest city that is or ever will be in mm, Game of Thrones. It. Got it. I yeah. think I'm thinking of Karth in the real life city. Probably. But, uh... Or is that one of our fantasy? Whatever. Yeah, so... That's... I just don't buy that the guy who can go through and just fucking slaughter people. He, this guy took on, what, four or five of the mountains of the mountains men? And then... Yeah. And he was... He walked away from it. They didn't. I mean, yeah, Arya was on his side, but... Arya... Arya... The Hound. <laughs> Arya, Arya stole one kill from the Hound. That's it. And that was a guy that was already dead. And as far as the Hound being injured, later in the show, we also see... So there's a, there's a point... So the Hound survives this fight. Alright? He shows up later Obviously. Clegane Bowl was a thing. Yeah. And so pretty much he ends up in a, working in a small village as kind of a mysterious stranger, just kind of... Do, trying to atone for his sins, be, helping hmm, out. Yes, the six foot six guy with a massive scar on his face from being put in fire by the mountain. In the books, he's, he's seven feet tall. Totally. In the books, he's seven feet tall. My point still stands. He's insanely tall. And the, in the books, he, the mountain's eight feet tall. My point still stands. These two are insane. Yes, but he's and, totally not recognizable to the common folk. Well, I mean, it depends on which common folk you, you go to. They, there's there's exaggerated stories that say his, his the entire side of his face was melted off, and they had okay, had, fair enough, fair enough, most, fair enough. And most people know him by the hound's head helm. That oh he yeah, fair they, enough. They ditches. Anyway, continue with your point of why the injury shouldn't matter as much. Yeah, so we see him. He has a he has like a very prevalent limp from having his leg snapped by the fall, right? He takes a weapon that he's not even as proficient with, a woodcutting axe, and he kills five of the bro of the Brotherhood Without Banners men after they go through and kill pe and kill everyone in, in, in the village. Oh. Like... Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, are you starting to see where I'm coming from now? This is... Okay, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. We see Brienne struggle against a, co against a couple whites. In, in, in the Battle of Winterfell. They're whites, let's be fair. She has a Valyrian undead. steel sword! She has a Valyrian steel sword. It's dead. 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 I'm pretty sure it's dead, not dead. No, 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 no. John took a torch and hit, hit, hit it against the white they bring to King's Landing. I've Yes, I remember that. Torch. Dead. The only thing that didn't work as well. Oh, he stabbed it. Well, no, I mean, technically, he did. No, if he, took no, the torch, he but... used the torch on um part of it, and he stabbed the other part of it. Mm, right, 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 right. But yeah, okay. it's thunderstorming while we're while we're doing this video. Oh yeah. And so I just have a hard time believing that, especially having shown how they how they are both what kind of physical capability they're both in after the fight that there's any logical reason that Brienne should have won that fight other than the storyboard wanted her to win and that's what the plot needed and for me i personally see, think that she could have easily won that fight considering the fatigue that was probably being felt by the hound the armor the smashing his head with a rock the smashing his face with her gauntlets i, I think the ending is is anticlimactic, but I, I don't see a reason why she wouldn't have won, especially considering that the two characters are the same size. It's not like 
yes, men typically are physically stronger than women. But once you get to six feet tall with mus, once once you get to like seven foot with muscles, there's not a ton of difference that you're gonna get, especially if you're both wearing armor and one of you is wearing better armor than the other. So they do make do a good job of showing the hound as being, you know, stronger than Brienne just by relativity. Yeah, I mean there are and multiple moments where like. Especially when, like, he straight up manages to, like, lift her up and slam her at one point. Yes, but as far as, far as the whole thing where uh, the Hound, you know, that would disorient anyone. Uh, again, I looked to the point, I looked to the fight he had with the uh, Mountains men in the bar, where they knock him down on the ground, and they're kicking him, and then he gets back up and still kills them. <laughs> Have you ever been hit in the head with a rock? Yes. She took a rock and smashed him right here in the head about five times in a row. No, the rock was like twice, and then she then she started punching him. All right, it was okay. Fair. It, it, so, which is which is a big difference because hitting someone five times in the head with a rock and hitting them twice in the head with a rock is a large difference. Oh, such a massive difference for the disorientation, and is my whole point in argument. Go to the parking lot. We'll see. We'll see how big of a difference it makes. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. The All rocks right. are small though. <laughs> It's not as accurate. Well, you said I wasn't doing landscaping earlier and have, might have some in the back of my truck. <laughs> anyway, in conclusion, I don't think either of us are going to convince the other one. No, of we're not. I, I straight up said neither of us are convincing each other at the end of this video. Do you, but, do you have anything to add to this? Because I'm pretty much out of points. I'm pretty much out of points. Well, Where, to, let's just summarize our points once again to get it out of the right, way really fast. You're going to go first. All right. My points, they're pretty much the same size. She's in slightly better armor, which is probably... A little bit heavier disorientation with the rock and the fact that he is tired that the mountain is tired from fatigue hound. fuck my bad the hound is tired from fatigue at the this point in the fight would make it that she more logically would be able to win in the fight i understand where you're coming from and you're not entirely wrong you have a logical basis for your theory for your theory you are wrong however <laughs> because you're because it's not right <laughs> you're wrong because that's the whole point of this video <laughs> Pretty much, the Hound is is up there in one of the top five swordsmen in Westeros. Brienne of Tarth doesn't make the top ten. All right, the Hound outclasses Brienne later in the show, even after sustaining injuries that would kill most people in that time period. You know, he he has a prevalent limp and still is able to do things like kill five people. All right, and quite frankly, I don't. I just don't see Brienne on the same level of swordsmanship as the Hound. Same physical strength, I could buy that. At least in the show, the books are different. Was it a, but was it a solid fight scene? Not really. Did it hit the right beats for a fight scene? I guess kinda. Kind of. And even then, that's only about part way through. Yeah. Because the fight starts off just yeah. Yeah. There are like three good shots in that entire fight, in my opinion, and those are the wide shots where it's not the actors and it's freaking stuntmen. Especially seeing the seeing the one-on-one -on -one duels they throw out early in the show and after in the show. There's the one duel between Drogo and the other D Dothraki, and that's a really Bron versus. Hold, hold up. Sorry. And that's done really well. It's all wide shots. Yeah. And then they they sh they've proven that they can do shot they can do duels where they. Move around an area and with, do with Bron and Varys. With Bron and Varys. Or Varden, yeah, never mind. But um, Varys is the, is the eunuch. The Mountain versus. The Viper. Viper. That's, I, that's one of the best fight scenes in the show, in my opinion. It, it's. Yeah, you're not special there. A lot of people think it's the best fight scene. Well, yeah, I, I understand I'm not oh. special for thinking it's one of the best fights. But. Also, the Mountain is canonically on, on Game of Thrones cocaine the entirety of the show. Do you know that? <laughs> He's canonically on coke? On Game of Thrones cocaine, it's called Milk of the Poppy. Oh, okay. And so basically, he, he, he That's, he's drunk the entire time. No, awesome. he, even better. He he basically doesn't feel pain. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, like he like due to his large size, he gets migraines and stuff. So they just they start pumping. So he just with, starts drinking. They, they pump him full <laughs> of stuff, so he's still effective. Just enough that he still feels it, so he's angry. That's, that's why. He, that, that, that's you know, that's that, amazing. I mean, that that explains why he freaking cut the head of the horse in the first season. Oh yeah, because uh, that was that was a bit of an overreaction in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it, 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 that's that's the Game of Thrones equivalent of throwing your controller on the ground. <laughs> you're not you're not wrong. I think that I think that's a good joke to end the video on. All right. 
But with that, we turn the uh, we turn it over to you guys in the comments. Who would have won in that fight? Who do you think should have won in that fight? The Hound or Brienne of Tarth? Let us know in the comments down below. And with that, I hope that you all have a fantastic fucking day. And as always, peace out, guys. Adios.